don't be a follower, be a student. I see too many people out there just following people recklessly, and uh, I think you'd be better off, in my opinion, I think you'd be best off being a student and trying to learn from people and trying to absorb and then applying what you see from people that you view as maybe being in a spot that you want to be in eventually and adopting some of their principles but being a student of what they're saying and of what they're doing rather than just aimlessly following them. Just a quote I heard the other day and I thought it was thought it would be useful for you guys. I wanted to talk today about this idea and concept I hear a lot of people talk about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's an, it's an interesting thing because <clears throat> the, the human body is so adaptive. It's insane the amount of different things that the human body can do. We have someone that could run like Hussein Bolt. You can run 100 meters in you know, nine seconds, right? We've got someone like Michael Phelps who can swim the way that he can swim. Uh, we have someone like uh, you know, Tiger Woods who can hit a golf ball the way he hits the golf ball. We got people that can pitch a baseball, throw a baseball over 100 miles an hour. We have all these you know, crazy like physical feats and then the ability of what the mind can do is completely unknown. Like we kind of have an idea of how far somebody can jump. We kind of have an idea how much somebody can squat. We kind of have an idea of how much somebody can deadlift and it's all within like reasonable numbers. Every once in a while, there's a dude that comes along or a girl that comes along and just kind of slaughters everybody, shows everybody a new way, but they don't really seem like an alien, right? They just, they just seem to be different. They seem to be ahead. Uh, sometimes they will even say, oh, that guy's you know, 20 years ahead of their time, 30 years ahead of their time. When it comes to the mind, though, I think when it comes to the mind, we do see some aliens, <laughs> like, like Jeff Bezos is an alien. <laughs> um, you got guys like... Uh, Elon Musk, they're just so, they're so different, right? But you can expand these things. And I, what I wanted to talk today about was not only the expansion of the mind, which I love talking about and we talk about often here, but I want to talk about expanded comfort because I don't think that you're necessarily trying to be like uncomfortable. Like that's a weird way of putting it. You're not necessarily trying to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. You're simply trying to expand your current comfort level. And the, there's so many different ways to explain this, but the human body is so adaptive to anything. An example would be, let's say that you never trained before. You came in here to super training gym and I said, hey, we're going to train legs today. And I just did my normal leg workout. Well, you would be dead. I mean, you would be, you wouldn't die from it but you might end up in the hospital. Like you might end up with rhabdo, especially if you tried the same weights and stuff. I mean, you would definitely get badly injured if you're not used to it, right? You, you, don't, you, didn't, you didn't have an opportunity to adapt to it, right? Now let's take myself who's been lifting for many, many years, and now let's have me lift with the highest level bodybuilder in the world right now with his coach, coaching me through every rep, coaching me for, through every set. The same thing's gonna happen to me. I'm going to get really jacked up in that workout because I haven't had an opportunity to adapt to it. So we need to utilize a little bit of something that's called hormesis. We need to use a little bit of poison uh, so that we can uh, end up on the other side a little bit better. It's not even so much poison as it is. It's just a small dose of a little bit extra. And the reason why I want to put this to you guys today is because I see a lot of great videos out there with motivational speakers. I love these guys. I love David Goggins and I love uh, a lot of the different people that we're seeing. But if you really listen to David Goggins and you sharpen in on some of the stuff that he says, he talks about callousing his mind. You know, we get these calluses on our hand, right? Get these calluses on our hand from lifting. And at first the calluses kind of hurt and they're kind of annoying. But after a while, they actually start to assist us with the lift and they allow us to handle more weight. They allow us to hold on to more weight without our hands hurting severely because that pain is something that kind of shuts you down because it hurts so bad. Your hands are getting like, feels like your hands are on like a waffle, like a hot waffle iron or something. I mean, it feels terrible. And it doesn't matter how tough you are and stuff like that. It just kind of hurts. It's very uncomfortable. And if you ever had your hand rip or have a callus rip, rip off, that is absolutely brutal. But we're trying to callous our mind we're trying to also callous our body. If you're trained properly 
and you're prepared properly, then a lot of these things fall to the wayside. This, these ideas that you have to uh, you know, talk yourself into this or talk yourself into that, there, there's always going to be some of that. There's always going to be some of that. But when you have started to um, get introduced to these things over a period of time, just like you do with periodization in the gym when you're trying to get stronger, you start out with 95 pounds. Then a week later, you do 100 pounds. Then a week later, you do 105 pounds. Progressive overload. You're progressively overloading your body with what? More, right? And that's what you would be doing if you were running, if you were trying to ski at a really high level, if you're trying to play tennis at a really high level, if you're trying to uh, swim at a really high level. These are all things that would take you a time. It would take you a lot of time. People are thinking about this, uh, you know, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Think about expanding your comfort level. And I want you to think about what that means. What that could mean right now is, let's say that we were to go for a run. And let's say that you're 300 pounds. Well, we go outside and we start walking. You're already huffing and puffing. And I'm like, hey, we're going to run to the mailbox over there. We're going to run to that stop sign. You go, oh, shit. And, and you're already kind of falling behind, right? Well, your comfort level is just really low. But that's OK. That's totally fine. What we would have to do is we'd have to bring you up to speed. Because if I went outside with a runner, they would demolish me too. And I'm not trying to keep up with them on day one. Because we're going to expand our comfort zone through exactly what I just said about the gym, through progressive overload. I want to make sure that you guys are understanding this is not some tough guy bullshit recipe. Because I think that that's what people think this is about. I think people think this is about biting your tongue, gritting down, and being an asshole, <laughs> and trying to get through your sets, and just being really mad. And it's not that. Sometimes there is a little bit of self-hate. Sometimes there is a little bit of self-doubt. And that's probably another video for another day where you tell yourself, you know what, shut the hell up. We're going to go through this and we're going to do it this way. Because sometimes you do need to go a little bit above and beyond. You do need to go a little bit overboard to learn where that line is. And then you start to learn, OK, that line that I crossed, that wasn't smart. I shouldn't do that that often. I should get there. I should touch it just a tiny bit. And I should pull right back because if I stay there, I'm going to break myself. And so you want to be really careful with it. But the main thing I wanted to share with you guys today is let's work on expanding that comfort zone. So the way we're going to expand it is just to figure out a way. It's so simple. It's so damn simple. I think it's simple. Do a little bit more than you did yesterday. When you do more, you will become more. Do more, be more. That's what I talk about all the time. But even with that phrase, that can be misconstrued. That can be misrepresented misrepresented and it can also be misinterpreted. It's not do more, be more, and you're forcing yourself to do more stuff. It's the things that you want to do. That's another big part of this. We're not trying to expand our comfort in shit that we don't want to do. If you really don't want to do cold therapy and sit into a you know, bucket of ice, then don't do it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense if you really think about it, right? Some of the things that you want to do, like let's say lose 100 pounds or lose 50 pounds, you can't, it's completely irrational. We are rational beings. This is what makes us different than a zebra. This is what makes us different than a goat. And this is what makes us different than an eagle or a bird or whatever. Human beings are, we're rational beings, but we are, we are kind of animalistic in a lot of ways. But you want to be rational about stuff. So you can't say, I want to lose 50 pounds, because you can't lose 50 pounds quickly. You want to say, I, I would love to start to lose some weight, right? And then you start to lose some weight. You start that process. If, if I was to snap my fingers, like I just did, if I said, boom, 50 pounds is off of you. And just as soon as the camera went over to you, boom, it's gone you would gain the 50 pounds back because it's the process of losing that weight. It's the progressive overload of you learning what to do on a daily basis and making it part of your life day in and day out and expanding your comfort zone and getting used to these situations where normally you would fold, getting used to these situations where normally you would screw up. Over a period of time, you learn that. That becomes ingrained in you. That becomes part of your lifestyle. Once it's part of your lifestyle, it's now part of your character. Once it's part of your character, it's not anything that you'll ever compromise again. 
and you'll be the guy that lost 50 pounds and kept it off. But if I did it for you, you never learned it. You never went through the journey. You never went through the process. You didn't earn it. You didn't get it. I think even, even in terms of success, I think a lot of times people think success is something that you get. And you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't just get success. Uh, you pour success into everything that you do, and that's how you become successful. And someone's like, man, how do I figure that out? <laughs> you, must be, you must be successful to become a success. There's no other way to do it. But you do so through all the small victories, all the controllables, all the little things, showing up on time. How about having a good attitude? How about a freaking smile? It's free, <laughs> right? A smile. How about you say, hey, how's it going? How about you're the guy that hugs everybody instead of fist bumps everybody? How about you're the guy that gives a little extra encouragement? You're the guy or girl that looks somebody in the eye a little bit more. You're the guy that gives a little extra handshake. Or you're the guy that checks in just to see how someone's doing. Hey, you want a cup of coffee? Can I get you like a water? Like you're doing good today? What you need, man? Or when you see somebody down, you pick them up a little bit. You know when someone's down. Don't ignore it. Don't shrug it off. Uh, last night was my was my mother's uh, funeral, and there was some. It was it was just an interesting set of circumstances. But those kinds of situations that we have in life, they make you really really think about stuff. And it made it opened my eyes up to how many people just want to be seen or heard. A couple people came up to me. I never met them before in my life. They knew that they knew my mother from church, and. Uh, they wanted, they wanted so badly to come up to me and tell me their story, which is really interesting. And I kind of thought about that for a second. I was like, they, they said, hey, we're, you know, we're super sorry about your mom. We loved your mom. She was a great person. We had a lot of fun with her, had a lot of great times. They mentioned a couple of good stories. Um, but then they, they told me about their loss. This one woman in particular, she lost her husband and her daughter like in a you know, similar like, time frame or something. But it made me just think, man, people want to be seen. People want to be heard from. People are walking around with pain. And, and, and I know that you have people like this in your life. And so you can be that, that beam of light for people. This is how you become a success. This is how you lose weight. This is how you, this is how you get to the next level. This is how you make money. You pour out stuff to other people and things will be poured back into you. That's the way, that's the way of the world. That's the way it all works. Anyway. Talk, just kind of wrapping this up on expanded, uh, expanded comfort and even tying it into my own mother's death. I've dealt with death a bunch of times. It has come knocking, <laughs> knocking down my door a bunch of different times with a bunch of different people. Luckily, uh, luckily we, we still have the people that we have around. And uh, luckily, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't, uh, hasn't happened to me yet. But, <laughs> but uh, my, you know, my mother uh, is somebody that, you know, she had a great life. She lived to the age of 69. I believe she died of a heart attack. She fell in the middle of the night, and I mentioned this story a couple times, but I'm not really like super sad about it, and it's not because I'm some cold-hearted bastard. It's just uh, I, have, I have gone through this process before. I understand that thousands of people go through this process every single day, and I'm not gonna let uh, a death uh, really slow me down a whole lot. I'm gonna allow it to advance me, and I'm gonna think about the way that my mother lived I'm not going to sit around and, and wallow and, and be sad about how she died or why she died or why this happened to me or any of those kinds of things. Through this process of personal development, through this process of uh, expanding my comfort zone, I'm more comfortable with this. I can sit here and talk about it. I can have a conversation about it. And if you came to me and told me about you know, the deaths you dealt with and stuff, that's when you'll probably start to see me cry because I would be empathetic towards what's going on with you, and then I would think about my own stuff, and then we'd both be crying. We'd both be in a, in a rough spot. Anyway, hopefully you found this video to be helpful. Uh, ex expand your comfort level. It's something that I think is simple to work on. Just try to do a little bit more than you did yesterday, just like you do in the gym. I know so many of you do this in the gym already. Take this and put this into your diet. You know, trade out that... Uh, that thing that you're eating, uh, that McDonald's thing that you're eating every day at lunch and trade it out with a protein shake and, and watch the changes that you're about to make. Trade out, you know, laying around at 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. sitting there watching TV and trade it out with a 30-minute walk with your family and watch how things start to change. None of it's hard. 
It's not hard. It's incremental. It's going to be more difficult. It's going to be more challenging than what you're used to, maybe. But let's even just eliminate that word hard. Just phew, put a line right through it. It doesn't exist anymore. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.